Now we're going to start adding textures to this model. So we can go to File, Export, FBX. And we want to include normals. And that's probably all we really need. And then in Substance Painter, we can just drag in the FBX. The template is set to Spark Air Studio. It already grabbed the file. And we'll work at 2K, just so we have a little bit more resolution to play with. And then defaults are good for the rest. So now the first step is always going to be to bake the mesh maps. And we want to do 2K. And we won't have an ID map. Everything else we can leave on. And now this time, we're going to break this up into separate layers so that we can work non-destructively on each of these sections. So in layers, I'll make a bunch of folders. I think three might be enough. So we have glass, metal, and the earpiece. And we can delete this empty layer. Now for the earpiece, we'll make a black mask. And we'll put something in here just so we can see what's going on. So make a fill layer, drop that inside. And we'll just make this a bright color. And then in the fill mode, we can choose polygon or mesh fill. And just select this whole thing. So now anything that happens inside of this folder will only appear on the earpiece. And we'll do the same for the other two. Make a black mask, and for the metal, we'll go to Mesh Fill, and we'll select this pole. And you can see nothing's happening because there's nothing inside of it. So we'll make another fill layer. We could just make this blue. Now you can see the selection is applied. So we'll fill these little nubs too. And then the glass will do the same. Make a black mask with the mask selected, mesh fill, and just select those two. And then don't forget about these little ones as well. So now everything has its own folder. So now we're nice and organized. For the earpiece, however, let's add one more just for this lens here. So make one more folder, call this lens. Make a black mask, and we'll fill this with another color. And with the mask selected, we'll do UV fill, since we already separated this as a UV. So now that's broken apart. So now all our main pieces are separated, so we can work in individual folders for each section of this, and we won't have to worry about any overlap of textures or effects. So let's start with the metal. In our material library, we can just search for metal. And to keep things simple, we can just grab one of these and apply it straight in. This platinum looks nice. So we'll just drag this directly into that folder. And now zooming in, you can see that it was applied. And because this detail is going to be really small on the face, I don't think we need to do much more here. And we can delete this blue fill layer. We'll do the glass last. So let's go back here to the earpiece. For this lens, we want it to be black. So we can just change this fill layer to black. And then let's adjust the parameters of it as well. We don't want any roughness. So it's nice and shiny. And that might be good for the lens. Just again, because it's so small, it doesn't need to be that complex. And a quick way to add some extra detail to this whole model is by using the curvature map. So let's make a fill layer and put it all the way on top. And in our project, all these maps that were baked out are in here. So taking the curvature, we can apply that to the base color here. And now you can see there's these nice little fine lines on the corners of everything. If I switch to base color, you can see that better. So this just adds nice little details pretty much for free. And of course, right now it's just on top of everything. So it's negated everything we've done. 
So let's right click on this and add a levels. So we'll drag this dot just to get this gray all the way to black. And then we can drag this one over just to lighten up the bright spots. And if the lines are looking too sharp, we can right click again and add a filter. And then click the filter button here and we'll add a blur. And this blur will be really subtle, so we'll keep it low. You can see if we crank it up, we get some very soft edges, which might be nice as a separate layer, but we'll just keep these sharp for now. So now on this layer, we can switch it from the normal blending mode to screen. Now you can see it's just adding those nice details. And then we can turn the opacity down so it's not so overpowering. And it looks like on the lens here, it's adding a lot of kind of chunky white. So let's right click and add a white mask. So that means it'll keep everything the same so far. And then with the UV fill, we'll make sure this is black and then single clicking here, we'll just paint that black and basically deselect it. On this layer as well, we only want to add color. We don't want to add any normal opacity, emission, metallic, roughness, or height. That way, when we switch back to material mode, this is still shiny. If we had roughness applied and this was turned up, it doesn't affect this because we have it masked out, but it would affect everything else in the scene. So you can see the other pieces are getting rougher and shinier. So make sure this is off. And now onto the earpiece. I want this to be a light gray, so we can just change this fill layer. Make it a lighter gray. And then we can turn off most of these. And let's see if it looks good with a little metallic. Yeah, maybe 0.5 metallic gives it a little bit of extra shine, but not too much. And we can turn the roughness up a little bit as well. And we have this panel here that we can isolate. So let's make another folder and we'll drag it above the earpiece and then make a black mask and we'll drop a fill inside of it so we can see. Maybe this will just be like a lighter panel here. I'll call this battery panel. And with the mask selected, I'll go to polygon fill and just single select all of these and make sure I didn't get anything on the back. I can also go in here and select these edges as well. And a safer way to do this would be in the UV mode or in the 2D UV mode. And switching to base color so I can see what I'm doing. That way we're not selecting any back facing polygons. Let's see what it looks like if it's darker instead. I think lighter looks nice. If you followed along in the robot tutorial, you might have downloaded the alphas pack. So I'll be using that to add a little detail here. So I'll add another folder and drag it out of this folder. And this will be battery panel details. So in this battery panel, let's add another fill layer. In this fill layer, we don't want to have any color. We just want normals and height, and we'll increase the height a bit. Actually, we don't need normals because we're gonna be using the height to generate this bumpiness. So we can turn off normals actually. So the only thing this layer is gonna be affecting is the height channel. So now let's add a black mask. And in alphas, and if I click this little filter here, I can see more detailed kind of folders. And I want to grab one of these hard surface alphas. I think one of these connectors would look good. So single clicking this adds it to the alpha of the brush. 
Now single clicking will stamp this on there. And if the depth doesn't look good, you can adjust the height and flip it from negative to positive. But it looks like negative height is correct here. And holding shift and right clicking, you can drag this light around. I think a simpler alpha would look better on this. Let's just try this connector here. And holding control, left clicking and dragging up will rotate this. Now we can just stamp it on right here. Now we have a little latch to get this panel off. And choosing a different alpha, we can add another detail right over here. That's kind of like the latch that'll pivot this around. And actually, if we pull this mask out of this boundary panel, you can see the stamp goes across. And I think that looks better to connect these two. So we'll keep it like that. Now let's add a little detail to this lens socket here. So if I line up the camera right in front, and I'll hit F6 to go to orthographic mode. And then holding shift while moving the camera around will snap it to the front. And you can see this is moving around and I want to stamp this alpha right in the center here and not have it tilted. So I'll change alignment to camera. That way it doesn't rotate. And then, and then holding control and right click, I can size this to fit. And then control and left click to rotate it. And then a stamp. Now you can see that nice extra detail there, kind of setting that lens in. So from this front view, we'll just have that nice extra little bit of detail there in the normal map. Now onto the glass. For the glass, most of this is going to be transparent, and then we'll have some white details that are opaque. So in this fill layer, we'll make the color white. And for starters, let's right click and add a bitmap mask. And then I'll type curvature. So we can grab that mask. And then right clicking on the mask, we can add a levels. And then crank this up. And it's a little hard to see what's going on here in this material mode, so let's switch to base color. So now you can see there's nothing in this checkerboard area, but these little white lines are visible. And I'd like to accentuate these more. So in this levels, let's try to get that brighter. And then we'll add a blur in add filter blur. That'll soften those up. And let's add another levels. And we'll crank this dot all the way over just to spread out that white more. So that thickens all these lines. Without the blur in the levels, you can see they're super fine. But by blurring and cranking the levels, we can kind of just force it to be wider. Now, before we get too far, let's look at the opacity channel. We need information to be all across here. We don't want to see any checkerboards. So to make sure the opacity is correct on everything, let's just go through all these layers really quick. The earpiece, we want to have opacity be one. The battery panel, it looks like it's already good. For the metal, we want opacity to be one. That way this is all white. And then for the glass, this should be black, not checkerboarded. So in the glass, let's just add a fill layer. Make sure it's in the right folder. and turn off everything except opacity and make the opacity all the way black. Now you can see we have a proper alpha mat here. So the black will be transparent and the white will be opaque. Now let's add one more fill layer in this glass folder and add a black mask. So in this black mask, if we just switch to a standard brush, 
you can see we can paint directly on the opacity. And we're still in the base color over here, but because this layer is including opacity, we can paint on what will be visible. And switching back to material mode, now you can see that opacity taking shape. We don't want the glass to be completely transparent, so let's switch over to opacity again. And we'll make sure this is all the way white. And in this mask, we just want to paint on a little bit of color just to the corners, just to give it a little bit of grounding so it's not totally clear. So I'll switch over to the 2D view. That way we can just paint directly on these. And I'm using a very soft brush here and making it nice and large so we get some nice smooth gradations. And I'll switch to UV mode just so it's projecting straight down on the UV. And then I can just paint across here. And let's switch to 3D and 2D view so we can see what's going on. And when it unwraps, this turned out upside down, so we just need to keep that in mind. So you can see now we're getting a little bit of a frosted glass look. And I just kind of painted a little bit randomly just to give it more variation and texture. Now let's create one more fill layer. And this is still in the glass folder. We'll make this white. And we can turn off some of these channels. We only really need color and opacity. Then we'll make a black mask. And this is where we'll paint on some of our details. So let's right click and add a paint layer. That way, when we're painting on here, that's contained in this paint layer and not directly on this mat. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility. And I'll switch to orthographic view and then hold shift and we'll snap to this front view. And I'm going to start by just using a few of these alphas to add little bits of information. And then I might draw some stuff on there as well. So I'll switch back to just the 3D view. And in this paint layer, make sure it's actually enabled. So now in brush mode, if you go to alphas, you can just select any of these and basically stamp directly onto the surface. And Substance comes with quite a few. And of course you can download packs that come with a ton of great alphas. I'll start with a little bit of text first. And remember, this is going to be fairly small on the face, so most people probably won't be able to read all this. But you'll be able to tell that there's something going on there. Switching back to material mode, you can see it's starting to come together. And in the viewport, you can see it's really aliased here. So over in these settings, you can activate anti-aliasing, and that'll smooth all that out so you can get a better sense of what it looks like. And in material mode, it doesn't look like you can see any of these kind of soft edges that we painted on. But in opacity mode, those are still there. So I believe it'll work, it's just Substance Painter not rendering the very fine or very subtle opacity. So once we bring this into Spark, we can see if all this transfers over. Now I have our glasses fully textured. 
we made folders for each of the different sections and used the mesh fill to kind of isolate each of those. And then from there, we were able to put all of our layers inside of that. And then to punch out this opacity, we needed to make sure the opacity channel was checked on all the right layers. And then for our normals, we just stamped a couple alphas using the height channel on a fill layer to push and pull those in and out. So now we have a fully textured asset. Now to get these textures out of Substance Painter, we go to File, Export Textures, and then Spark Air Studio as the template. And we'll choose 1024, and then choose the folder, and then Export. And then we can open the output directory to check on those. Color looks good. We don't have any emission. Normals look good. And the ORM is crazy as always. Probably good. Now let's open Spark and put this all together. I'm starting with the face tracker preset, just so we get this little guy here automatically. Now I'll drag in these textures. And then go out and find the OBJ or the FBX. And now let's drag the glasses into the face tracker. And to make it easier to position, let's add a face mesh as well. And I'll pause this so we can actually see what we're doing. Now in this default material, I'll just apply these three textures. So we'll switch over to physically based. Now move these roughly in place. It's obviously much too large, so let's scale it down. And now if you look closely, the texture here and all in here looks really distorted. It looks like possibly when we added the final lines or the final edges to this model, the UVs got a little stretched. So let's hop back over to Substance Painter and export the mesh from there. So hopefully that'll fix these UV issues. We'll go to File, Export Mesh, and we'll apply triangulation because I think Spark does that automatically anyway. Now back in Spark, we can drag in this new model. And then we'll pull this into the face tracker. And let's just delete this old one. And delete it here as well. And in this material, we'll apply all the same textures. The color, the ORM, and the normal. And change the blend mode to alpha so that this is knocked out. And now you can see all these textures are fixed. So the UVs transferred over successfully out of substance. And to make this physically material work better, we need an environment. So let's just add one from the AR library. And I always like this sunset. And to make sure the ORM is working, we need to turn these channels up. Now you can see how that's looking a lot better. We have our metallic bar here. And over in the color, make sure this is all the way up so it's using the full values. And you can always switch between linear and RGB depending on how these come out or how you export them. I think sRGB is maybe how we export it. It looks like these colors are a little bit more accurate there. So now with that, we can scale this down and put it in place. And because Spark doesn't do any sort of ear tracking or ear occlusion, it's okay that this just kind of stops wherever. We don't have to worry about hooking this around the ear. So now we can delete this face mesh. Now to make sure we can't see the glasses behind the head, we need to add an occluder. So let's add a face mesh back in there and make a new material. And we'll rename this. Matt Occluder. 
And all we need to do is bring this alpha all the way down and make sure that the face mesh is above the glasses. So now you can see as we rotate around, these disappear when it's behind the face mesh. And it looks like you can see through the eye holes, so we want to make sure the eyes and mouth are closed. And in this viewport, it looks really alias because these lines are really thin, but it looks a little bit better on mobile. So now we've got the asset fully modeled, fully textured, and implemented into Spark. Now it looks like the opacity of the clear part of the glass is so transparent that you can't even see it. So let's go into the patch editor and add a little bit of alpha manually. So we'll take the color texture, which contains alpha, and then we'll make a patch that's just the value patch, and we'll change it to color. And what we want to do is add some value to the alpha channel. So let's make this alpha channel pretty low, let's say 50. And then these can remain zero, because we're only going to use the alpha channel. Now let's unpack the RGBA from the texture. And this will be a vector 4, because it includes alpha. And right away, we can pack the R, G, and B back in. And this will also be a vector 4. So now we just need to add this alpha and this alpha together. And to make sure we're just grabbing the alpha, I'll unpack this as well. Make it a vector 4. And just grab that alpha. And nothing happened because it's not going anywhere. So we need to select the material, grab this texture, and then plug it in. And as you can see, it gets a little bit darker because if we turn this alpha channel to 255, you can see the color channel here is black. So it's rendering all this as dark. So if we wanted this to be light and transparent, we'd have to go back into substance and make this color white. I think a little bit of darkening is fine. It's almost like it's a tinted glass that'll reflect all the holographic displays better. So now we can just see it a little bit more and it should pick up reflections a little bit more. You can see right along there, it's grabbing a reflection and we can rotate this environment texture just to get, get a better sense of the light all the way across it. You can see it's just picking up a little bit of that reflection.